we believe that every budget is an opportunity to put forward our vision of the next 10 years. We are doing that in this budget. The White House laid out its budget proposal for 2020. Today, the border wall is just one part of the president's $4.7 trillion plan. Damian Paletta is the White House economic policy reporter at the Washington Post. I promise you this is not your typical boring budget conversation. Take a listen, though. Damian, most of my viewers can't even wrap their heads around $4.7 trillion. It just doesn't make any sense to us. But what they can understand is spending more than you got, okay? How much does this add to the deficit? Yeah, this was the most striking thing to me in the budget. It, it, uh, it locks in $1.1 trillion in deficits for the next three years and then a $1 trillion deficit in 2022. You know, even during the recession, we didn't have deficits of that scale for this long. And, um, you know, there's all these proposals and cut this program and, and spend more on the military. But that's the number that I think is going to shock a lot of Americans. We already have $22 trillion in debt. And here we're locking in over $4 trillion in the next four years. That's a big number. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to hear from the Republicans who, in past years, they were very, very strict on, you know, cutting government spending. I, I'd be curious to hear what they have to say about this deficit. Let me move on, though. Uh, $8.6 billion more for the president's wall. How is that going to go down? Well, you know, it ran into a buzzsaw immediately on the Hill. Democrats said there's no way they're going to approve that. You know, they uh, opposed new spending on the wall a few months ago, and they eventually agreed to $1.4 billion for the wall, but there's no way they're, they said they're going to accept 8.6. Now, what the president's doing is he's kind of foreshadowing the fight he wants to have later this year. They have to pass a new spending bill by the end of September, or there will be another uh, government shutdown. And he's saying explicitly he, he wants $8.6 billion to build more barriers along the southern border and putting the Democrats on notice. And Democrats are going to have to decide whether they want to have that fight as they get closer to the 2020 election or if there's a way they can try to resolve that and not have a messy dispute that could end in a shutdown, you know, and who knows what happens after that. Yeah, what I'm hearing is that they're going to be using federal workers as pawns again in this battle. Let me move on again. Um, we're, we're pulling troops out of a number of places, okay? We're, we're, we're de-escalating. We're getting out of these wars, and yet there's, there's a big increase in the defense budget. How does the administration explain that? The, the Trump administration says that there was big cuts, um, but really it was reductions in the increase in defense spending during the Obama administration. That's true. They were trying to reduce the deficit during the end of the Obama administration, and they did that in part by reducing the military budget. The Trump administration has been dramatically expanding the military budget since they came into office with congressional support and even support from Democrats. And now they want to take the defense budget from $716 billion a year to $750 billion a year. Um, that's a huge level, especially as you mentioned, when they're at a time when they're bringing troops back to the United States. They just think there needs to be a lot more investment in, you know, planes, ships, and military infrastructure, and that that money is necessary. Now, uh, I get the sense that Republicans on the Hill um, are somewhat supportive of that. They're nervous about how the White House is proposing to do it by essentially putting some of it in this thing called OCO, which is this kind of unregulated fund that it's a lot easier for the White House to use as they wish. So I expect to hear a lot more about that, but it is a big number, especially because just a few months ago, President Trump said he was going to cut defense spending down to $700 billion. So there's a $50 billion swing from what he said a few months ago to what we saw today. Yeah, uh, okay, here's an exit question. Let's call this a line uh, uh, in the sand. President wants to cut uh, some domestic spending, uh, Medicaid, you know, uh, health care for the poor, Medicare, you know, for the elderly. That's not going to go over well with Democrats. No, not at all. And, uh, you know, what we see across, especially with Medicaid, food stamps, and some of these social welfare programs, is the president wants to impose new work requirements for people to say you essentially have to try to get a job. You have to be working. And if you're not, you're going to lose these benefits. Um, obviously, Medicare is a program that, you know, I think more than 40 million Americans receive benefits from. The, the White House is very sensitive about the changes they're going to be making to that program. But at the end of the day, it would cut about $800 billion in spending over 10 years. And that's something that Democrats are watching very closely and they, you know, plan to really go after, especially as they get closer to the 2020 election. Okay. Damian, thanks a lot. I really appreciate the information.